Hey, what is going on, guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here to break down the Game 6 NBA Finals showdown slate. We've had a pretty good series so far, hoping for another good game here. Um, I'm hoping for a Game 7, uh, just because I don't really have much rooting interest for, for either team. So I'm just hoping uh, Boston can pull off Game 6 and, and we get a Game 7 in Golden State. But... Um, yeah, guys, if you guys are, if you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is DK. I do cover content for prize picks, for Super Draft, for NBA Top Shot, and uh, for DraftKings. Uh, if you guys are looking for more in-depth content, you can check out my Patreon link down below. I had a really good week, finally, in USFL. Finally avoided injuries for like three straight weeks. I had an injury or a couple injuries, uh, but finally had a really, really solid week last week. Came close in the $222 tournament to taking that down. Uh, but yeah, we're covering that. We're covering NBA. We're covering uh, esports. Again, that is linked down below if you are more interested. If you have any questions, just let me know on Twitter or in the YouTube comment section. And the sponsor for today's video, guys, is Superdraft. Make sure to use the code DKDFS for a $50 match on a $50 deposit. They do have player prop um, stuff where you can win up to 20 extra money as well as multiplier formats. So check them out. Take advantage of the free money if you are a new user. Okay, so let's quickly take a look back at my lineup here from Game 5. So, um, I once again, just kind of a middling day. Um, you know, it wasn't an awful day, but it wasn't amazing. I was kind of like a little above, I think, 50th percentile um, when I finished 31st out of, yeah, I guess like about, about half, a little less than half. But, um, yeah, so... Steph Curry had probably, we definitely had his worst game of the finals. Shot 0 of 9 from 3, did not make a three pointer. Um, I did go to Draymond, a captain. That was worked out pretty well. He had his best game of the finals. Also had Wiggins, but Wiggins was very, very popular, 70%. Marcus Smart was just, man, kind of just there. Rob Williams was fine. Expected a little bit more from his 30 minutes, and Jordan Poole saw a lot less minutes last game, but that was, again, because they're playing from the lead. Um, so yeah, that's it for the look back. Um, so let's talk about game six. Uh, so we'll start off with, well, let's first take a look at the Vegas odds. I would guess once again, that Boston's probably favored by a couple points. Uh, but let's just take a look. So yeah, Boston favored by three and a half. That's basically been, I, I feel like it's three and a half has been the spread for every game so far. Whoever's playing at home, is just three and a half point favorites. Uh, but we'll, we'll first start off with the road team. That's golden, uh, golden State. So Steph Curry, 11.6 K. Um, the price has slowly been climbing. He was what 10 2 to start the series, now he's 11 6. And again, he had his worst game of the series, so could lower the ownership. I'm not really concerned about it. Uh, the price point is the only thing that's a little bit concerning. Once again, not a lot of great value, so you're gonna have to make some really tough calls. But, um, I do think you're gonna get lower ownership on stuff. And just because he had one bad shooting game doesn't mean he can't go for 60 fancy points, uh, for, for game six. So, Still like Steph Curry, good amount. Uh, in the mid-range, we have Wiggins, Clay, Draymond, Looney, Poole. So uh, Wiggins is at a phenomenal final series. Uh, also, the minutes have really ticked up, right? His roles changed a little bit, just minutes-wise, right? Because we saw 35 minutes here, only 30 minutes in that blowout, but 40, 43, and 43 minutes. So he's almost just playing whenever Tatum is out there. Um, and he's been super aggressive on the offensive end. Now, my only concern with Wiggins is I think he's going to be a bit overwhelmed, but it's it's hard to deny that, again, the minutes have really ticked up. Like playing an extra six, seven, eight minutes is, is pretty big. So I like Wiggins. Uh, my only concern is I think he's going to be pretty popular in tournaments. Clay Thompson, uh, well, you guys know the narrative, you know, game six, Clay. It's game six. So does that mean Clay's going to have a good game? Not necessarily, but he's still going to play around 40 minutes. He's still relatively score independent, so he has a low floor, but the ceiling's there. And again, if he has a decent shooting game, we've seen Clay go for 40 plus for sure. So he's always someone that I have some interest in tournaments, but more often than not, like, as I basically said the same thing all series is he's going to let you down more often than he comes through. But when he does come through, he does have a pretty high ceiling. And then Draymond, um, going back to the road, don't like him as much. The price went up a little bit, but... Um, still a guy that's going to be a big part of this team, probably playing mid thirties minutes, um, assuming no foul trouble. And he almost had triple double last game. So he, Draymond's fine. Looney's interesting here because he only played 17 minutes, but he got massive foul trouble, picked up three fouls in three minutes, uh, almost played 15 minutes there in the second half. So that is, that's appealing to me because maybe box score watchers get off Looney uh, maybe, you know, if Golden State continues to turn out a Porter, maybe he's going to be relatively low on, but 
I think Looney would have played a good chunk. Um, like, I think he could have played close to 30 minutes in game five had he not gotten in foul trouble. So um, I do have some interest in Looney, actually, uh, because I do think he's going to be a pretty big part of the rotation, whether or not he starts or comes off the bench. So, uh, yeah, do have a little bit of interest there. Jordan Poole played his least minutes of the series, of course, when I finally buy in. Every other game, 24, 25 minutes. I finally play 14 minutes. Like, really? So, again, I think pool kind of game flow dependent. When when Golden State falls behind, you can see pool play a bit more. When they're playing from ahead, you know, the minutes have, have, ticked, down, have ticked down a bit. Um, pool did get hunted uh, defensively uh, in the first half there. He didn't play a ton in the first half. So, Again, high risk play, kind of game flow dependent with Poole and his minutes. Um, I do think there's there's still a possibility of him playing, you know, 25 or so minutes, but it's kind of dependent on how the game goes. And then Otto Porter Jr. started last couple games, but it's only played 14 and 15 minutes. That is a bit concerning. Um, so right now, more of a tournament only play. I still think if he plays really well, you could see, you know, 20, maybe even 25 minutes from Porter. So I think he'll be relatively low on, still a little bit of interest. And Gary Payton was the surprise, played 26 minutes, played well. However, again, you have to factor in what happened, right? Looney got in massive foul trouble. I think Payton was really the big beneficiary there. Um, so I don't think we had 26 minutes again from Payton. And we've seen 11 and 10 minutes previous to that. So like he's, his minutes have kind of been all over the place. Again, I think he has the opportunity to play more when Golden State is playing from ahead. I think if they do fall behind, which is more likely in this game, that, that he sees less minutes. So... Peyton probably plays anywhere from like 10 to 20-ish minutes, I would say. Um, so definitely intriguing for Alley and a good point per minute guy. But same thing I'll say with Wiggins. I think my only concern here is, uh, well, I guess the concern with Peyton is the minutes are not guaranteed. And I think he's going to be pretty popular after the last game. And then the two punt plays, Bielitsa has been in the rotation. He's been playing, you know, five, six minutes a game on average. Sure. He's basically been priced, so he's in play for that reason. And Iguodala actually did play a couple of minutes, but again, you had Looney foul trouble, you had Draymond foul out. So not sure if Iguodala touches the floor here in game six, unless something weird happens, like some massive foul trouble or um, uh, or an ejection. And moving on to the Boston side. So you saw Tatum and Brown both play the entire second half. You got Tatum 11 2. I'm just oh, tilting me. Um, I guess he didn't have as good of a game as I thought, but. I don't know. I finally faded Tatum, and I feel like he just like, couldn't miss for a long stretch of time, especially in that third quarter. Uh, but yeah, with Tatum, I think he's got a little bit of a higher floor than Brown um, with the peripherals, right? Good rebounder, can get some assist, um, and do or die time. So I would not be surprised if Tatum plays the entire game, to be honest. So I think Tatum looks like a very safe player there at the top. I think Jalen Brown, Jalen Brown makes for an interesting play here because the price really hasn't moved. And in high stakes last late, Brown was only 25% owned, at least in my tournament. Um, so does does it does it mean Brown's gonna be 25% again next or next scene? No. But I, I think that's that's interesting that the ownership was very low on him. And again, the price didn't really move. So I'm curious what the ownership's gonna come out to on Brown, because if he's once again, you know, in the 20% owned range that's going to boost the appeal for me a lot. Um, again, does have a little bit lower floor than Tatum, but he can still go for 50 plus. So um, Brown's really going to come down to what I think that ownership comes out to. Um, because if he's going to be like pretty popular, if he's going to be, you know, 50-ish percent owned, then yeah, I'm, I'm okay fading. But if he's once again going to be pretty low, like 25% like he was last late, that's going to boost the appeal. And then Marcus Smart had a off game, um, only went for 26 fancy points in 40 minutes, but he's going to play huge minutes as well. Um, and I think, you know, he's had his two really good games playing at home, um, or two of his better games, I should say, playing at home. So, um, yeah, Marcus Smart, I think, is good option in the mid-range, definitely captain viable. Um, you know, we've seen almost three 40 fancy point games for, for Marcus Smart, which at this price point, I think that, that definitely – uh, would be enough. Um, so yeah, like smart. And then Rob Williams, again, he's been banged up. He's just always the one that I like, I don't know what to do with because he's been injured a lot. And like some games he can barely move. Some games he looks a little bit more healthy. He didn't look great in the first half, but, uh, looked a little bit better, more of a jump in his step in the second half. Also again, three days rest. Now with Rob Williams, if we're going to once again, get like 30 or so minutes from him, um, he, he looks really appealing, but I don't think there's a guarantee of that. Obviously injury concerns, but I like his upside a good amount. And then Horford at 6'6", 
you know, hasn't been playing as much because of the emergence of Rob Williams. Um, so I think we get, you know, low 30s minutes in Horford unless, unless something happens to Rob Williams. And then Derek White didn't have the best game last game, shot 0 4, did only play 21 minutes. I believe that was his least of the series. Um, yeah, a, a little bit concerning, but we know he can also play like 36 minutes like he did a couple games ago. So ownership might not be that high after, after that bad game, but uh, I think White makes for an interesting GP play, um, especially if he gets, you know, 30 plus minutes again. And then the two value plays, Williams, uh, Grant Williams, and Peyton Pritchard, not a ton of interest. Grant Williams probably plays somewhere around 15 minutes, unless there's some foul trouble. Um, again, playable. Um, and then Peyton Pritchard uh, did only see five minutes last game. He's the one that I can see his minutes. Maybe maybe Boston goes to seven-man rotation in this game. Maybe Pritchard doesn't even play. So that is a little bit concerning. But I'll say this. If I knew Peyton Pritchard was going to play, you know, 10, 12 minutes, I would like him to get him out. I'm just not sure if the minutes will be there in this one, especially with it with it being do or die for Boston. And that's it. I don't expect anyone else to be in the rotation. Would be shocked if Daniel Tice plays. So um, that's going to wrap it up for the video, guys. Um, again, if you do enjoy the YouTube videos breaking down uh, the show on slate, just make sure to leave a like button. Let's try to aim for 100 on this one. Subscribe with the notification bell. If you're not subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, getting somewhat close to that 12K subscriber mark. So really appreciate that, guys. Um, good luck. Hopefully you have some big winners, and I'll see you all in the next one.